uh, universities. You know, and there were the, the, so there was the sort of derogatory terms applied um, even back then. Um, those terms like red brick, I hardly ever hear that term nowadays. They've sort of fallen out of use, but they've been replaced by a, a kind of new kind of academic uh, snobbery around institutions. And um, so we have the post-1992s, um, or the sort of even more heavily laden former polytechnics, um, of which I think uh, Wolverhampton uh, is one. Um, and I've, I've visited quite a few former polytechnics, and actually I've been incredibly impressed, um, because very many of them, of course, um, have their heritage um, going back to the Victorian era, long before some of the big names on, uh, on this list, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and they have their roots in the technical uh, art and design and teaching colleges um, from the Victorian era. <clears throat> and um, indeed, uh, Wolverhampton is, is no different, I understand. Um, so uh, it's growth coming in the 19th century with the, um, from the Mechanics Institutes. Um, the Wolverhampton Free Library, 1870, um, starting to offer technical and commercial and general courses. Uh, the School of Art, 1851. Um, you know, that's a couple of years ago now. <clears throat> and 1903, coach building, house painting and pattern making. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I find it um, uh, quite shocking, really, that there are those who um, uh, dismiss a 150-year heritage um, of educating adults uh, with, uh, you know, with a, a sneer and call them uh, former polytechnics, you know, laden with uh, with meaning. Um, but uh, but there we are. Let's um, let's move on to the the high and mighty um, of uh, Oxford and Cambridge and just have a quick look at what's happened to them over uh, this period. <clears throat> um, so back in the early 60s, 17 percent of the university places uh, were at uh, Oxford and Cambridge. Um, obviously, a uh, very high predominance of um, uh, independent sector and, and pretty much the rest um, in, in 1962 um, in the maintained sector. So 39% Oxford, 25% Cambridge would have, um, I imagine, been pretty much all uh, grammar school uh, intake. Um, today, they're doing a little bit better. Um, Oxford, 55% from the maintained sector. Cambridge, 56 uh, better is that uh, is that good enough over over 50 years um, well uh, let's uh, let's just have a look at what's been happening in participation generally in higher education um, so young participation in higher education has grown enormously it's grown 22 percentage points um, since 1995 um, and even more so um, in the past seven years or so you'll see there's a, a 12 percent uh, leap there but of course, one of the things that we're interested in um, is about uh, widening access. Um, and so it's interesting to have a look at what that looks like for more disadvantaged uh, young people. And here you'll see that actually there's been an even steeper growth in participation um, over that period since 1995. So 51% um, uh, uh, and 32% in seven years since about... Uh, 2004-05. But, and there is quite a big but here, if we start to look at where that widening of participation um, is happening, uh, surprise, surprise, so this chart breaks it up into um, the uh, participation by more deprived groups um, by tariff, so that's the, you know, how, what, what sort of uh, level of qualifications you've got. And so what you hear, see here, and this is um, irkily similar, isn't it, to the uh, independent school line, you know, a straight line going along the bottom for the higher tariff um, institution intake, and all the growth coming um, from, uh, from medium tariff and lower uh, tariff. Um, and I think what you can take from this, and, and, and we'll come on to look at what, why this might be happening, um, I, what I take from this is simply that widening participation is happening from the bottom up and it's a you know if we chart if you put all these charts on top of each other you can see that the shift is coming up 
Firstly, um, uh, in the general population, you know, by age group, and then um, by socioeconomic uh, group as well. <clears throat> if we look um, at uh, the different uh, types of schools, um, so if anyone needs a break from all these slides and needs to kind of dash out for fresh air, just um, do. Uh, now that I'm ploughing through them, I think you must be going nuts. I, I, uh, I'm afraid I'm completely um, addicted to them because uh, I just think the evidence is, is so fascinating. So this is um, uh, acceptances over a 10-year period. So the grey blocks is 2000 and the red blocks is uh, 2010. Um, and uh, you can see over this period that all the, actually all the numbers and all the growth um, is in uh, the state sector. Um, you'll see the acceptance rate, and when I talk about an acceptance rate, I mean of all those who apply, how many get accepted and accept, because you could get accepted and then not enrol. So you, there's two things that happen there, you get, a, you get accepted and you accept. Um, and of course, in, across the whole sector, the acceptance rates have dropped in recent years because of the student uh, number controls. Um, but there's not a, 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 as big a gap as you might expect, having seen those uh, previous uh, slides. It's not a, as big a gap in the rates of acceptance between um, independent um, and state schools. And indeed, uh, grammar schools are slightly better even than independent um, uh, schools. Um, just uh, let's have a quick look um, by gender. Um, so I'm wondering what you might be expecting to see on this next chart. Um, which looks at um, acceptance uh, by gender and acceptance rates. Um, so here the reds are the girls, and you can see that the number of them is uh, growing, and the gap between the number of girls and the number of boys. Quite extraordinarily, the acceptance rate for boys is actually significantly higher than for girls. So you see right there in 2010, there's, what, a three percentage point difference between the acceptance rate for boys um, and for girls. And when I saw that number, I was, just, I was just absolutely gobsmacked. I thought, what on earth can be going on? There can't, surely there can't be um, gender-based discrimination going on uh, in admissions. Um, and it's just, just for context, um, you see that big gap between the number of girls and the number of boys. There are actually 20,000 more males in the population uh, than girls um, at the moment. Um, but we're accepting uh, 50,000 more females. <clears throat> um, so if I start looking at the difference between boys and girls on, um, on tariff score, so you'll see here that there is a slight difference that at the lower tariff score, so at lower qualification uh, levels, you get the biggest gaps between the acceptance rate uh, for boys um, uh, over girls. And that by the time you get up to the higher uh, levels of qualification, it's, it's pretty much um, equaled out. Um, so it looks like lower achieving boys, as we've seen in the, in the uh, previous data, um, if they do apply, uh, they have a better chance uh, to be accepted. Um, so let's just have a look. Is there a difference in the types of qualifications um, that they have? So even for um, A-levels only, um, the boys are doing uh, better, although um, uh, they do have better acceptance rate um, uh, uh, for boys with vocational qualifications. And if I'd, if I'd dredged out all my BTEC uh, data as well, um, you'd find that there's a, a, a predominance of um, boys over girls um, involved in BTEC or, or similar applied type qualifications. <clears throat> By school type, only the grammar schools and independent schools have better female acceptance rates. So, you know, what on earth is, what on earth is going on here um, if you think about all the achievement data? Um, and then I started to look um, at subjects. And this is where you start to uncover what I think is the, the sort of fundamental un underneath this quite interesting uh, um, set of data. 
Um, and it's about STEM, so science, technology, engineering and mathematics. It's about STEM and non-STEM. So those middle bits are about clinical STEM and practice-based. So here, um, all the girls here, that's, uh, that's um, nursing and things like that, which are, are predominantly female. But if you look 